Welcome to the March or Die podcast today. So glad to have you joining me. And uh, it's been a couple of weeks if you have been keeping track, and I'm sure you have diligently been waiting for the next episode of the March or Die podcast to come out. And uh, it's been a few weeks. There's a lot of things going on, as you may or may not be aware. In our world, in our nation, in our communities, in my home, there are a lot of things happening. So it has been a few weeks, but we are back at it, and I'm glad to be with you today. If you are watching, please subscribe wherever it is you're watching. If you're over on YouTube, and that's the very best place, go ahead and subscribe. If you have not, hit the notification bell. That lets you know when more content like this and other content, of course, comes online. would love to share that with you. And if you enjoy the podcast, if you get something from it, and we do this, I do this, so that you can benefit. Please share it out. Let someone else know about it. That would be fantastic. If you are listening to the podcast version, the audio version, wherever it is you're listening from, and uh, thankfully you're able to listen from just about every podcast platform, go ahead and make sure you're subscribed to this show on that platform so that you know when other shows, other episodes come online. And uh, it is great to be able to jump back into this. So many things going on in our world. And this is, of course, the show where we have the opportunity to ask the question, what do you do when you feel like your world is falling apart? What do you do when you feel like your world is falling apart? Uh, More specifically, how do you move forward when you feel like your world is falling apart? I don't know about you, but I'll tell you how I feel right now. (laughs) I feel like in a lot of ways, the world is falling apart. We had hoped that by now, at this point in the year, we would be beyond a discussion about COVID-19, the coronavirus uh, stuff, and everything goes along with that. We thought we would be on the other side of that. Now we look down the road, and it's unclear when we'll ever get to the other side of this. I know some things are in the works, but who knows? We, We have no idea. And yet we put our heads down and we keep marching. We thought, many of us, that when we got to the other side of the election, whether you are a supporter of the left or a supporter of the right, on the other side of the election, so much of the chaos around our national political conversation would be over and we'd be able to move forward. And yet here we are. We have no idea when it will all actually come to some form of resolution. We're right in the middle of it. And yet we continue to move forward. In the middle of a world in chaos, and we could bring this down to a a micro level in our own lives, maybe you don't care about the national political scene, maybe COVID-19 isn't really something that you spend a lot of time thinking about, but you have relationship issues that you're struggling through right now. You have financial issues that you're dealing with. You're trying to navigate what the future of your financial situation will look like because of work and other things. Uh, other things going on in your life, whatever it is for you, we, we look at the, the world and chaos around us. And again, for us, sometimes it's, it's very personal. We ask the question, how do I continue to move forward? I do my best. I, I, I do what we've talked about over 18 episodes on this podcast. I put one foot in front of the other. I do my best to keep moving forward, but I'm at the point where I'm just exhausted. I'm absolutely overwhelmed, and I don't know if I can do it (laughs) anymore. If you feel that way, I share that sentiment. So often we look at what's in front of us and just step back and go, I'm not sure I can do it anymore. Today I want to talk about something that may seem a bit counterintuitive or contrary to the idea of moving forward, but it's such an important concept, one that we at least need to consider. Again, like the other podcasts, I'm not going to spend an hour breaking this down. I'm not going to spend a lot of time walking through it. But I want you to think about this because this is critical, particularly when you have been fighting the battles, when you have been marching, when you have been pushing. What we're talking about today is absolutely critical. It's this, the value of a strategic pause. The value of a strategic pause pause. In military terms, this is well known. It's been discussed. It's been researched. It's part of a strategic plan. The opportunity to pause. Now, strategic is an important word in that. Uh, This is not the same thing as quitting. And often when we talk about uh, a strategic pause, when we talk about putting a pause on what's happening or or stepping back or getting rest, these things that we talk about, uh, we somehow equate that with quitting. A strategic pause is not quitting. 
a strategic pause. It's not throwing in the towel. It's not giving up. It's not saying I can't or won't do this anymore. It's not any of those things. Uh, Again, if you've listened to any of the other episodes of this podcast, you know that the idea, the thing that we talk about almost every week is how to move forward, how to confront the battles, as long as they're the right battles. We've even talked about that. But how to move forward in a meaningful way. A strategic pause is not quitting. It's strategic. That word strategic is so important. It it means it ties to the overall strategy. In combat, there are two concepts related to planning. There's strategy, that's the big idea, and there's tactics. Strategy is the big plan that's put together by those who are at the top, by uh, those who are the big leaders from the Department of Defense in a combat or a military setting on down. This is big strategy. This is, we're going to move 30,000 troops from here to there. We're then going to do this and move into a second phase. That's strategy. This is the big idea. Tactics are how we execute that on a small level, on a small unit level. How are we going to execute on kind of a micro level the big strategy? So when we talk about a strategic pause, what we're talking about is a pause, an opportunity for rest that connects to the overall strategy. There are a lot of examples I could give uh, of this, and, and I'll give one that's personal to me. I remember as we were making our way, and you've heard my story if you've listened to other episodes of this podcast, as we were making our way from Kuwait into southern Iraq, and then on our way to Baghdad. Baghdad was our ultimate objective. I was with the 1st Battalion, 5th Marines, and uh, we, as a part of the division, 1st Marine Division, were making our way to Baghdad. Most of the time, we were moving as a battalion, about 1,200 Marines, a lot of stuff that went along with that, but we were moving independent of other units. They were doing their thing, we were doing ours, all in support of the overall strategy of getting to Baghdad, of securing the city and moving into phase two, which was a rebuilding and political phase, if you will. We're making our way to Baghdad, and one day a pause was called. This was a strategic pause. Uh, I will never forget the scene of this, and for those of you that are listening that were there with me, you know what I'm talking about. We were typically moving. We moved very, very quickly. We could But this day, when the pause was called, there were hundreds and hundreds of military vehicles all on the same road. Imagine a Los Angeles traffic jam, (laughs) Los Angeles freeway, maybe the 405 or the 5, those freeways that go through Los Angeles. Imagine a traffic jam. It's, it's, It's rush hour. That's what this looked like. But all of the vehicles were United States military vehicles put in a pause. We had been pushing for several days, pushing hard all day and all night, stopping long enough only to get the fuel we needed to get back on the road. We had pushed so hard and so fast, so violently and aggressively that we were outrunning our support. The logistics train, it's called, that is the vehicles that carry food and water and fuel so that we could continue to move forward. We outran all of them. And we were getting well beyond our ability to continue, not due to lack of will, but due to lack of resources and all of the things that are required to move forward. So as part of the overall strategy of getting to Baghdad and moving these large units around, the division commander decided we would employ a strategic pause. We all stopped. A strategic pause, if you read military doctrine, is for one of three reasons, or perhaps all three reasons. It is to rearm, repair, and refuel. Rearm, repair, and refuel. That day, and there were others, of course, that's just one big example in my mind, but that day was an opportunity for us to do all three, to rearm the ammunition and the other equipment that we had expended or lost along the way. We were able to rearm. We repaired things that were broken. And when you move night and day, vehicles break, equipment breaks, stuff breaks. You need to stop long enough in a safe place, even though there's a battle in front of you, to repair. Repair the broken. And then refuel. This is really important. (laughs) It doesn't matter how aggressive or how motivated you are. If you don't have fuel in the tank, you can't keep going. 
You need to refuel. We did those three things that day, and we continued the march, made our way to Baghdad, and did what we, went, what we were there to do. But the same strategy should be employed in life. You see, we can move for so long, so fast, that things begin to break. Those things can be relationships. They can be opportunities. Uh, It can be vision. Our vision breaks. We can no longer see beyond what we're simply experiencing. We lose hope. All of these things are broken and they need to be repaired. We need to be rearmed with the tools and the equipment to go forward. We need to be refueled, whatever that means in our lives. It can mean different things for different people. Refueled to get into the battle. We just become overwhelmed with life and overwhelmed with the fight and overwhelmed with the difficulty and overwhelmed with all the stuff that goes along with it. And so when someone says you simply need to put one foot in front of the other, you can honestly reply, I'm just not sure I can do it. I'm out of everything. I'm exhausted. I'm overwhelmed. I want to fight and I want to win. I just can't do it anymore. It's time, perhaps, for you to take a strategic pause. A strategic pause is done in a safe place while the war is still happening. But it's an opportunity for you to step back from the war to do these things so that you're prepared to re-engage in the next battle. We could go back to the New Testament. We know that even Jesus, from time to time, would step aside, go aside, (laughs) He would go into the desert. He would spend some time alone. There's an example of the Apostle Paul. If you are familiar with the life of the Apostle Paul, he traveled everywhere. There's an example of the Apostle Paul traveling from one city to another by himself. He, he sent everyone else in front of him and walked by himself. Why? For the purposes of a strategic pause. He needed to be alone. He needed to uh, kind of get right in his own spirit before he got into the next battle. We see this throughout Scripture. We certainly understand this in our own lives. And maybe for you, it's time for a strategic pause. You need to step back and rearm. You need to refit with the ammunition and equipment that you need. Perhaps you've used all of your resources. You've expended everything that you have, and now you're doing your very best. But you don't have what you need. Get what you need. Maybe what you need is some more instruction. Maybe what you need uh, is some some counsel. Maybe what you need is some help. Rearm. Step back long enough to get what you need. Repair. Fix those things in your life that are broken. One thing about the battles of life is that there is always collateral damage. Uh, Unfortunately, that collateral damage, it, it often happens in the context of our families and our relationships. Sometimes it can happen financially. Some repair needs to take place. It's amazing how much more focused we can be on the battle when the other stuff in our life is repaired. Perhaps you need to rearm, refitting with the ammunition and equipment that you need, repair, fixing those things that are broken, and then refueling. Sometimes the most helpful thing you can do is take a nap or get a good night's sleep, eat a good meal, go away for a little bit, take a a time of vacation, even if that's only a couple of days, refuel. Spend some time in prayer. Spend some time reading the Bible. Spend some time investing in those things that fill you up, those positive relationships and positive conversations. Refuel. And on the other other side of the strategic pause, because you've taken care of yourself and you've gotten everything in place, you'll be able to, with great courage, confront the battle in front of you. There's a saying, perhaps you've heard it. Now, whether you believe it was Vince Lombardi, the football coach that said it, or General George Patton, that's up to you. It's been attributed to both. (laughs) But the saying is this, fatigue makes cowards of us all. Fatigue makes cowards of us all. There is no place for cowardice in combat. There is no place for cowardice when we're dealing with those battles of life. We need to move forward courageously, not without fear, but with more courage than fear. And yet if we're exhausted, it's amazing 
how the fear begins to overwhelm us and the courage just as quickly leaves. Perhaps in your life, it's time for a strategic pause. I want to encourage you along those lines today. Again, it's not quitting. It's not throwing in the towel. It's not giving up. It's stepping back and getting everything you need to re-engage in a powerful, meaningful way. The battles of life will come, and certainly they do. Sometimes they're long and protracted battles, but you can win if only you will. But always remember that when the rounds are coming your direction, when the mortar shells are falling, (laughs) when the battles of life seem out of control, you only have two choices. You can march, putting one foot in front of the other, moving to the place where you can best affect the battle. Sometimes that includes a strategic pause along the way. You can make the decision to march or you can stay where you are and die. But the choice is always yours. Choose to march.